pop in the chat if you can. Great. All right. So my name is Scott Hampton. I live in Visalia, California. This is a, my return visit. This will be my third time in this event. I did it last November's. I did an ornament. Today I'm going to do what's called finger pots. They're just small little lidded vessels that you can put spices and things like that in. I've made a few of them, so we'll see how it goes today. It should be a fun demo. I hope you guys really enjoy it. And so let's get started because we are on a time crunch. So I'm going to go switch cameras over to the overhead here. And I've got a, I believe it's a two by two, maybe a little bigger. Yeah, it's a two by two block in my chuck here. And these are just small little vessels. So, and I just square, I just put it in the chuck square. There's no need to put a tenon on something like this and it'll hold just fine. And I think it got, I need to loosen that for a second because it isn't exactly running true. I'm just gonna loosen it up and move that down, down a little bit there. That should do it. That's looking better. All right, so the first thing I want to do, I'm going to grab me a small spindle gouge, just about <clears throat> three-quarter inch. And I am just going to round this puppy over once I get my lathe turned on. There we go. And I am going to do something over here. I got my vacuum chuck thing in, plugged in here, and it's running rattling a little bit, and I don't want that the microphone to pick that up so there we go that's better so we're just going to round this over i'm at i like to do these smaller pieces at a higher speed so i'm at about 2000 rpms right now and i'm just going to start bringing this roughing gouge into the center you don't want to bring it in from the edge because you can get catches and you'll get really bad chip out so you want to start somewhere in the center there and just work your way towards the end. Until we get it nice and round, we can do some peeling cuts here. All the way up to the chuck. Yeah, I can tell by the sound we're just about there. And we'll just have a look, see here. Okay, we still got a flat spot there and a flat spot there. So we'll take care of those really quick. Won't take much more. Yeah, that's going back and forth all week trying to decide what kind of project to make. And I thought this would be a fun one. It's not too difficult or hard to make for beginners. And it's fun for experienced wood turners too to hone your skills, keep them nice and sharp. And it's a fun, quick design for a weekend project if you only have a couple hours in the shop. So, okay, so I'm just gonna trim up the end here, make it running true here. All right, so now we got to decide how big of a lid we want. You know, mark it with a pencil. And we got to figure out how big of a pot we want. So we, it's a pretty good size. We can put the lid, they're not too big of a lid. It gives it more room in the bottom there. So we'll just make a small, small lid for this one. I'll, I'll probably make two or three of these today. Because they are kind of a quick project to make. And we'll just try different designs and things like that. So the first thing we want to do, I'm going to grab me a spindle gouge. It's a, it's a 5 8 I believe. It's got a nice round end on it. It cuts really nice. 
And I'm just going to actually start shaping what, what type of shape I want on here. And I'm just going to kind of make a, almost like a round shape and then bring it up and then taper it back out this way. So I'm going to start at this end here and I'm just going to start sort of like creating a co cove towards that line where I want that lid to be. And we're going to add a little detail to the top there. So it's fine the way it is right there. And we're just going to start making a nice taper towards that line to match that other. So they join in the middle. And I'm just going to leave that little bit spot right there for now so I know where the lid's going to join there. So I'm just going to keep tapering a little bit here. And then let's bring that taper up. And I'm going to start rounding over the bottom here. I'm not going to use all of this. I'm going to use part of this as a jam chuck so I can finish the bottom of the vessel. These are just roughing type of shapes here just to get a fun idea of what I'm looking for. It's almost almost like a sort of like a milk jug type of thing. Shape that I'm creating for this one. Now we do want to leave a bit of a mass down here at the bottom because we are going to hollow this out. And we're just going to clean up that detail here and some of that in there. Kind of decide how big of a that lid is. Just a little bit too big on the top, so I could tell. It's, it's, it's wider up here than it is down there. We don't want that, so we're going to take this down. All right. So now we got to do is decide what we want to do with this this lid here. There's many different things we can do. Oh, by the way, this is sugar pine. I get it out of the mountains here in the Sierra Nevada mountains, which are like 10 miles east of me, where Sequoia National Park is. If anybody's familiar with California, most Californians know where those parks are. So I'm just going to start rounding this over a little bit and then put a little detail on top. I need to lower my tool rest a little bit there. I didn't raise it up. So we're just going to bring it in and we're just going to start rounding this over into the... Let me switch cameras there and we can get a better view of that, maybe, huh? Yeah. Oh, we got a good view of it. Okay. I'm trying to keep an eye on that. The chat, too. This is all. <laughs> I'm used to doing Zoom, so we've got an overhead camera there. You guys can see the shape. I'm sorry I didn't have the right camera on there, maybe. Well, you can see the shape. This is the high point I'm leaving. That's where the lid's going to join. So, but we want to just bring this. So I'm going to bring that back to the side view so you guys can see what I'm cutting there. Do the shoulder view there. Uh, it's a little. Let me zoom that in a little bit and you guys can get a better picture of that. What I'm doing there. All right. Yeah, we're just going to bring this around one more time here. We're just going to make a nice little dome top on this one. Yeah, we're just going to clean up some of those tool marks. I'm just going to do a scraping cut back over this way. Just to clean up some of those tool marks that I left behind there. And I 
that's not doing it. So let's see if I can get a scraper going on there. So I'm going to grab me a easy wood tool and I'm just going to bring it across like this. So I can clean that up a little bit better with this tool. This is the round nose carbide mid size that easy wood tools makes. Still got a little spot right here. I'm cleaning that up. Tell by the low spot because it's darker than the rest of the wood around it. That should be a good enough for sandpaper to clean up. So I'm gonna grab me a piece real quick and just go over that. So get rid of any leftover tool marks. And we'll sew down the lathe. And we're just going to leave that little detail here because that's going to be like the rim of the of the lid when you so you can grab it and pop it off. Let's clean this up real quick here. Any questions? Got a lot of. Just looking to make sure I don't have any questions I'm missing there on the chat. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys joining in this morning. I know it's kind of early 10 a.m. my time here on the West Coast. All right, so I'm just going to, oh, just a little bit of a, that up just a little bit before I bring in the, Elf tool, I'm going to create like a flower pattern right on the top there. Just to add a little detail to the piece. And we'll grab that tool here. This is just like a texturing tool. It's got a carbide tip on it. It spins with the lathe. And you can do all kinds of weird designs with this. If you practice with it, you can get all kinds of neat designs for it. So. I'm just going to put a flower pattern right here on the top. So I'm just going to let that spin there. I'm just going to bring it out just a little bit. And that's all the detail I want for this piece here. It's got a nice little, let's see if I can get up a better picture of that. See if you guys can see that or not here. There we go. You guys can see that little pattern right there. It looks much better in person than it does on the video, and it will darken up once you put a finish on it. And you can see the overall piece right there in that picture. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to start cleaning up the... I'm going to cut like a little groove right here, right below this rim. Using a parting tool. And that part will be the tenon that goes down inside the vessel. And we'll see what that is when we get to it. I just want to bring this in right below that rim. I'll make sure I'm on an overhead, I am. Okay. And we need to make that a little bit deeper because we do need to part this off. Just a thin parting tool, just a little bit more. I'm not too worried about grain match with these little, these little vessels here. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. I'm gonna make a, that should be good enough there. And we want to make sure that's good and straight and parallel. So just by eye, that's nice and level there. 
So I'm going to grab me my stem parting tool. I'm just going to part this lid right off right on this section here. Let's go all the way down. And by the sound, you can tell when it's about ready to pop off. Which a little bit of sandpaper will clean this up real quick. It's a little hand sanding. We'll get rid of that little nub and stuff. So we'll put the lid to the side. And we need to hollow out the center. So we need to switch around our tool rest here. And I'm going to grab me my spindle gouge. There's many ways to I'm going to make sure that's on center. There's many ways to let's see where we're at there. There we go. There's many ways to make sure I got the right picture. There we go. I'm going to zoom this one in a little bit more. So pardon me if I move the camera a little bit. Oh. A little too close. Let's get that down in there. There we go. That's a better picture. So I'm going to bring in my tool and I'm going to do a back cut because you are cutting into end grain. And if you come in this way, you can do it, but it's going to fight you tooth and nail. So it's better just to come in this way and do a back cut. But first, we got to measure our lid tenon because we do not want to go past that wall. And there's usually a mark where you can see it right there, which I can, from where you cut this groove and then it, the parting tool leaves a rough surface and there is a line there. So I'm gonna mark that with a pencil real quick so you guys can see it. It should be about, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller than the, what it's showing. That way I can work my way up to it so we got a nice fitting lid. So we're going to leave that much to start with for a wall thickness there. You want to bring your tool rest right up to it. Make sure your, your point is on center, which is a definite help when cut, making back cuts like this. So we're going to start out using the spindle gouge and I'll probably switch to the easy wood tool to finish all the way to the bottom. And I'm just starting in the center, working my way out. It almost acts like a drill going in. When you hit the center there, you see how it pushes into the center. See, I'm getting a little deep for this spindle gouge. I'll do a few more cuts with it, but it'll be time to bring in some type of scraper at this point. But I am going to clean up the walls a little bit, get them a little thinner there. Almost try to match the outside curve in a way. So I'm going to stop my lathe. I want to see how deep I am. So we are deep enough, that's how I don't want to go any deeper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ground, grab this round nose easy wood tool again and just clean up the inside. Bring it around and bring it out to that wall thickness there where the pencil line is. Make sure there's no little nubs in the bottom there. I just start, I, I, I put my the tool in the middle, sort of down below the center there, and I raise it up to where I can feel it cutting. And I bring it around. That usually gets rid of those little pesky nubs in the bottom of boxes. All right, so we just want to check to see the fit. Now it's time to do it now that we got to that pencil line. 
So we got a little bit to go yet. We're just going to creep up on that. Well, we got some So I'm just going to use this tool to clean this up. And then I'm going to grab me a straight scraper so I can make a parallel cut down for that lid to fit. Okay, where did my... I put that scraper somewhere. And I am looking at my rack right now. The, my, thought I had it all set to go. Sorry about this for a second. Where are you? There you are. Right. Found it after knocking some stuff over. <laughs> so this is just a regular straight scraper and I'm just going to use this to creep up onto the side of the here and make just a straight cut in. To make a parallel wall. Now this scraper is I, what I did is I took it and I tapered this side too, so it does not rub on the wall. If it was square up and down, it the bottom part would be rubbing way down in here and causing you some problems. So I like to cut this. Sort of like a bedan. You can see where I've taken this off on an angle there. I'm just testing the fit one more time. Okay, we are just about there. This is the time where nerves of steel come into play. So you do not want to take too much off or you will have a loose fitting lid. So this is where you're going to want to stop and check, stop and check. Just about, it's best to keep, work your way up to it. So you can't put the wood back on, as you know. And I'm just taking minute, very small cuts here. And we got the fit. Yeah, it feels really nice and comfortable there. As you can see, it fits very nice. It just slips right on in there. That's what we are looking for. And let's see, any questions? Oh, somebody from the wood, current wood turners are watching. That's my club down in Bakersfield. Hello, how you doing? It's nice to see you guys joining in. That's great. I'm glad you guys could join in and watch. So I got a parallel spot right there. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring that round nose easy wood tool back in. And I'm just going to, I'm going to start cutting down deep inside there just to get rid of that little ridge. And just to make that a little bit thinner inside. Make sure it's nice and clean. There we go. Nice light cuts. So sugar pine is very, it's a nice wood to turn. It is a soft wood. Hey, I got that dimple right out of the center there. So I'm just gonna very lightly touch it with some sandpaper on the inside there. I can remember where I put that piece. I just grabbed me another one here, smaller piece. And I'm just gonna turn my lathe down for this. You don't want it going very fast when you're sticking your fingers into. And we just wanna clean up that rim here. Take care of that. I got to keep an eye on the time. We're half hour in. That's good. That's what I was thinking. We got time for one more. And we can add a little more design element to the second one. 
And I took my time making this one, so I'm going to race through the other one. It's like a production turn, hopefully, <laughs> once we get this one done. So what we want to do now is we're going to bring this around, and we're going to part this off. Then we will jam chuck it onto the onto the waste wood there and finish the bottom. So I'm going to grab my thin parting tool and turn up the lathe. And I'm going to check the depth one more time. I just want to make sure I'm not going to go through the bottom. That looks about right. Go past the line on my finger. Yep, we're good. All right, so here we go. And I'm just going to do double cuts on this one so it doesn't bind up in there on this cut. To the bottom and there's just barely anything holding it on so we can just grab it and pull it right off just like that. So now I'm just going to make a jam chuck, get this puppy fitted on there and we can clean up the bottom. I need to grab my parting tool here and we'll just get an idea first here, hold it up there. And we need to raise my tool rest up. And being this close to the chuck, you want to turn off your lathe before you do any tool rest adjustments. You don't want your tool rest going into those jaws, that's for sure. So I'm just going to do a little cut here. And see how we're doing on size. Okay, a little bit more. Doing a small cut so I still have a little bit more wood left if I need it for the... If I do cut this a little too small, still got plenty of wood for the jam chuck. All right, so that's just slipping on there. So what I need to do now is work my way back, making a taper. And we want to leave a little bit of wood here for the chuck to rest on, or the, the box to rest on. And nice easy cuts here. And now we could just put this on here and it'll leave a mark. The size I need is right there. So we just flatten this area out. Just a little bit at a time, because we do want a tight fit. So we can just pop this on there. Oh, just, just a hair. Here we go. You don't want to go too far. You really want to have a nice, strong, tight fit. So I can still see that mark a little bit on here, so I know I've got a little bit of wood to take off. There we go. And I'm starting to hit that mark, so it should fit pretty well now. There we go. Let's pop that on there, make sure it's nice and seated against this part area here. I need to switch over again. I keep switching. Forgetting to switch the cameras, I'm sorry. So we've got that on there. So now I want to do is just make a nice bottom here, just kind of a little flat, little little concave in the bottom, so it sits nice and flush on the on the ground or on the table or wherever you're going to have it. I'm going to do my spindle gouge again. Put it at an angle for this cut. And it's a little too high since I switched tools around. So what I'm going to do is I just want to bring that, bring that round curve into here, give it like a nice round bottom. Right. 
got that done. So now we want to do is we want to cut a that's still a little too high on the tool rest. We're just going to cut a little concave right here. So the piece sits nice and flush on the on your counter if, or on your vanity, whichever you're going to use it for. So they're great for jewelry boxes and spices and whatever you want to use them for. So I'm going to grab me my sandpaper here and clean that up. Yeah, get that bottom done. And I'm going to bring that elf tool in one more time. I'm just going to do the same kind of pattern on the bottom here. As people do tend to flip things over and want to look at the bottom and see what they look like. There we go. I know it's kind of boring watching some sanding, but so I need to turn the lathe down to like 400, between 400 and 500 for this type of tool. Okay, so we are we are at 500. So that's a good bit there. We're just gonna get this thing running. I'm just gonna bring it out. And we're gonna see what that how that came out. If it's ugly, we don't want to keep it there. Yeah, it came out pretty. So I'm just gonna add a little detail. Make that stand out a little bit. I'm gonna bring my little point tool in and put a little groove to make that kind of stand out a little bit. A little point tool here. We're just gonna make a little groove right there. There we go. And I'm gonna grab me a white scotch pad to get rid of any fuzzies that might have left behind. There we go. And we should be ready to pop this off. She doesn't want to come off. There we go. There's always a way. <laughs> so let's have a look, see what we've got here. So we've got the lid. This will need to be cleaned up, of course. Just some sanding there. And you can see where I've got that. There's that little ridge there where this will fit right there. That's where it's parallel walls there. And there we go. We've got a nice little spice cup or jewelry, little jewelry ring box or something. I call them finger pots. So it's got a little pattern on the bottom too. All right. So we're done with that one. So we'll get started on the next one. I'll go a little bit quicker on this one because we do want to do want to get to the fun part of this. This is a piece of ash. It's a little bigger than the other block of wood, I believe. I think this one is two and a quarter. Uh, yeah, it's just a little over yeah, two and an eighth. So it's not too much bigger. So I just want to make sure everything's running kind of level. Move that down just a little bit. Not that much. <laughs> a little bit of tightening up there. That needs to come down. You want to make sure your wood's kind of level here. As much as you can with a block of wood stuck in your jaws like this. So I'm going to check my chat real quick and see if there was any questions before I move on. Oh, okay, here's a random. How does it to do it? <laughs> you called it sugar pie. Has anyone ever tried making syrup from one? Like <laughs> one wood from sugar maple. I don't think it works the same way. I don't think the, the sap probably doesn't taste very well. <laughs> so, 
And I don't think you can get the sap to come out like that. So, oh, I've got two mics going here. Hold on one second. I got it. I don't know if it's echoing with you guys or not. Hopefully, you guys can still hear me. Yeah, it shows that you can. So, so if we can get through this one fast enough, I'm gonna torch it with a torch and add some uh, goat cream to it. So let's just. Get on with this one really quick because I am at you know, 25 minutes. So let's let's just see what happens when I do this really quick, huh? All right. You guys saw me take my time at the last one. If you have any questions, I'll stop every now and again and look in the chat. So we got that nice and round. Got my parting tool. I did the last one here and threw up the top. I'll probably make the top, the lid design a little different. So add a little more flair to it. And I need to grab my pencil so I know where I want to go with this. So I'm just gonna, just a general idea. You can always change it. Do, 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 do. Need to grab that one spindle gouge. Here we go. So I'm gonna make like a taper with this one, and then make it round on the bottom. I'm just gonna make a more deeper taper than I did on the last one. It's a little high. As you can see, um, it's going to be more of a tapered piece. down so the, the, the rim's going to be different on this one I need to have a thick rim on the on the lid for this because I am going to torch it and if it's too thin it's just going to burn it right off so I'm going to make a a little round detail, round it over a little bit. And we're just going to start rounding over the bottom here like you did that other one. As you can see, I, I created more of a taper on this one. And let's see what we can do with the top here. As you can see, I'm going to make a kind of a different top on this one here. Yeah. I'm just going to bring it up to a point once I get to, to that. As you can see this is coming up. There we go. There we go. That kind of gives it a different kind of a look, doesn't it? So I'm going to bring that down a little bit into there. Same thing on this side. I probably have to take this it's a little bit too big. That's what I'm looking for. So. so I want that taper to 
come in so it follows through, brings it into the rim there, and then it matches the same thickness as the diameter as the That's the lid there. So I'm going to grab me a smaller spindle gouge. I'm just going to round this part over a little bit better here. And it's still a little big for what I wanted. I kind of like that. It's not really a round piece. It's more of a... More, more, more of an oriental type of look to it, which I like. So I'm just going to have my sandpaper, get rid of some of those rough pull marks and then I'll grab my torch I'm going to torch it before we do anything else I'll probably hollow it out before we torch it because the wood will move on me here Uh, keep an eye on the, the time. So we're going to do the same thing. Grab that parting tool, make that little ridge. So I'm still on the overhead camera there. A little bit deeper. It's nice and flush. Make sure that's, I, I kind of make like a little cut inwards so it'll sit flat on here. So to angle it in a little bit there. All right, there we go. I'm going to grab my thin parting tool. There you are. Put the lid off just like we did the last one. All right, so it is fine it up a little bit, so I didn't need to make a double cut there. There we go. So we've got the lid there. And I do have a burn mark there, which means this tool does need sharpening. But I won't be using it anymore because I got my other parting tool. All right, so I need to find where that line is for the size of the tenon. It pretty much starts where that burn mark is, so it's already marked for me really well. So I'm just going to grab me that round easy wood tool and just dive in it's also kind of quicker these are great for doing end grain but you gotta make sure it's on center and you hold the, the tool straight and parallel you don't want the handle up or down or it does cause some catches you can turn it to the left or right left to create a, a shear cut if you want What I find with these, though, they do tend to grab the, the end grain in the middle. So I, for this, I'm just going to grab that spindle gouge one more time and just do some back cuts real quick. Okay. 
you guys have already seen me do the hollowing, so this is just a demo piece. So I'm just going to stop here. And just make sure to get the fit, the lid to fit right. So I'm going to see where we're at as far as that goes. I do want to get to the decorating part as fast as I can. So I'm going to grab that. That's straight. That straight scraper again. I'm just going to bring this in. I probably made this opening a little too big now. We'll see how it fits, though. Yeah. I did a little bit. But there's still, I didn't go quite all the way in. So we can clean that up just a little bit. We're just going to clean that up. Uh, I forgot to switch the cameras. Sorry about that. Let's see if I can get that to fit in there kind of tight. It just needs a little bit more off. Make sure the scraper is facing the right way. Almost. Doesn't need to be super tight. We just want it sitting in there so we can, when we torch it, it's not going to fall off. Almost. As you can tell, I heard a pop on that one. That means I'm almost there. Let's get that sitting in there. Ah, that's not going to stay. Well, I'm just going to have to torch them separate. <laughs> All right, so what I want to do is I just want to kind of round over the bottom a little bit more. the torching 10 minutes perfect so we're just going to bring this in overhead camera again so this is where about where i would just part it off from this from this area right there I'm going to touch it with my sandpaper real quick. You ready? Tool marks because they will show up if, when you torch it. So I'm just going to get rid of those. All right, so we are set to go. Move some stuff out of the way. Brush off all the shavings. Get them all out of the way here. And don't want any extra shavings laying around the, the lathe. As we will be making a, some, adding some heat here. So we just want to make sure everything's out of the way. I do have a cover that's going to go over the, the bed lathe, the lathe. The... All right, so get that out of the way. Let me get that board up here. All right. So I'm just using regular old propane. I'm gonna turn it up all the way before you light it, and then you can adjust the flame as to where you want. I don't need that much. There we go. All right. So we're just. This is ash, so it it does scorch really nice. It does raise the grain, which is really nice for like gilding creams and such. Yeah, 
And you just want to make sure you get all, make it nice and dark all the way around. A good scorch. There we go. Got that part done. I'm going to grab me a little dishwasher brush. These are great. I used to use the copper brushes for welding and soldering, but I, I found... I found that it let, leaves scratches into the wood when you take the residue off. So this is really great for taking that, that residue from the burning off. It opens up the pores. There we go. Uh, I guess I was having an echo. I think I had two mics on by accident. Sorry about that if that was the case. All right, so now I want to grab me some gilding cream. I've got all kinds, silver, green, blue. I was thinking doing green on this one. Or red, if I have red. I'm not sure if I have red. Let me see if I got red. I've got white, silver, blue, purple. <laughs> uh, darn it, no red. So hopefully it's for Valentine's Day, but the greens, we've got St. Patty's Day coming up eventually here pretty soon. So. We've got some green wax here. And you just want to smear it on and push it down into those, and make sure it gets into the grain of the wood. We've got five minutes, we are good. I don't know if I'll get to the lid, but this is the same thing. You would scorch it, apply the wax, or, or any gilt cream you might prefer. This is Hampshire Sheens. I get it through a company in Texas. And you can get it through Jeff Hornig, you know, also. Some of that extra wax off in the center there. We haven't sanded the inside yet. The sanding will get rid of most of that. And we've got some really pretty color form in there. Oh, yeah. just keep forgetting to change the darn thing. Sorry. <laughs> I get in a rush and I forget to switch the cameras, of course. You guys should be able to see it now. Yep, yep. Yeah, sorry about that. So I, I turned it up. This is a wax, so it doesn't really need another finish over it, but you do want to take the excess off. You can see there. And you just want to keep turning it to a clean part of the, the cloth here, the paper towel, until it's not coming off anymore. You got to keep switching it or you're just reapplying it over and over and over again if you don't move the towel around. So you can see it's getting lighter and lighter there. And it's getting cleaner and cleaner. You can use a lacquer over this, I believe, to seal it if you prefer to do that. But it is a wax finish and it will dry. As you can tell, it's less and less is coming off. Yeah, it's pretty clean now, so we're good to go on that one. And you'll be able to see all that nice, pretty green in there. The lid would come out the same way as this. So that's an another idea, idea for these. I wish I had more time to finish the lid, but I don't. So it looks like I've got like three minutes left. <laughs> so... I want to thank everybody for coming by, and I hope you enjoyed the demo. And please, please subscribe to my channel. I've got some new videos coming up pretty soon and, and some live things too. And if you subscribe, you'll get notices about those. So that'll be a, a fun time for everybody. So 
I really appreciate you guys coming around and I'm gonna leave you with a little a little music. Let's see what we got here. A little Shaken Stevens for us here. Yeah, let's see if we got him going. Where is he? That's for us here. All right. Thank you very much. Show now.